Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video we're going to be looking at finding the volume of a sphere using double integration and polar coordinates. If you like the video then please hit the like button and I'd be delighted and honoured if you'd subscribe to the channel. Without further ado let's go over to the whiteboard. We're tasked with finding the volume of a sphere. Instead of using the volume formula V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed we're going to use polar coordinates and double integration. We'll use the volume formula to verify our results. The blue surface in the diagram forms a sphere and is defined by the equation z squared equals 16 minus x squared minus y squared. Visualizing this surface in three dimensions, we see that the sphere is centered where x, y and z are all equal to zero. And so half the sphere is above and half below the xy plane. Due to the sphere's symmetry about the xy plane, we can look at this problem as finding the volume between the upper hemisphere of the sphere and the xy plane or where z equals zero. We can then multiply the result by two to give the total volume of the sphere. Our first step in calculating the volume enclosed between the two surfaces is to determine the region of intersection between the xy plane and the upper hemisphere and then to convert this region to polar coordinates. To find this region, we need to equate one equation to the other. If we take a look at the equation of the sphere, it's z squared is equal to 16 minus x squared minus y squared. And so z is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared. If we take the positive square root of this, we get the equation of the upper hemisphere of the sphere. Let's visualize this. If we look at the positive square root in graphical form, we see that it lies above the xy plane while the negative square root lies below the xy plane. If we now equate the equation of the upper hemisphere of the sphere to the equation of the xy plane, we get the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared is equal to zero. And squaring both sides of this equation gives 16 minus x squared minus y squared equals zero. And therefore x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. As we can see, this is an equation of a circle with radius 4. To convert this equation from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, we let x equal r cos theta and y equal r sin theta. And making the substitution for x and y in the equation, we have r squared multiplied by cos squared theta plus r squared multiplied by sine squared theta is equal to 16. And factoring r squared out of this equation, we have r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 16. Using the trig identity where cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1 leaves r squared equal to 16. And taking the positive square root of both sides, we get r is equal to 4. To help visualize this, I've sketched the region of intersection on the whiteboard. As you can see, it's a circle with radius of 4. Now let's look at what we need to do to find the volume. The volume is the double integral over the region R, which sums infinitesimally small pieces of area shown here as dA. These are multiplied by a height function, f of xy, and this gives infinitesimally small pieces of volume. Let's take a closer look at what happens when we sum or integrate in the r direction. When we integrate in the r direction, this will represent the inner of the two integrals. This diagram represents a sector of the region, capital R. The angle it makes is infinitesimally small and is denoted by d theta. Within the sector, we have infinitesimally small pieces of area denoted by dA. The size of each area is the length multiplied by the width. So in this case, dr is the length and r d theta the width. So dA is equal to r dr d theta. To find the total area of the sector, we integrate or sum in the r direction.
When we sum or integrate in the r direction, for this exercise, we begin at the origin of the circle. So where r equals 0, and we travel to the boundary of the circle. So where r equals 4. As we saw when we converted the region of intersection to polar coordinates. If we multiply an infinitesimally small piece of area, dA, by a height function, we get an infinitesimally small piece of volume, dV. So that's the height function, f of xy, multiplied by r dr d theta, which as we saw, is an infinitesimally small piece of area. We can now define the limits of integration of the inner integral. The lower limit is the origin of the circle, so where r equals 0, and the upper limit is where r meets the circle, so where r equals 4. I'll deal with the height function f of xy shortly, but let's first find the limits of the outer integral. So that's when r rotates about the angles of theta. To do this, let's first visualize the scenario as r rotates about theta across the region capital R. As r rotates, it begins at theta equals zero and advances 360 degrees or two pi radians around the circle. Each sector represents an angle of d theta. By summing each of the infinitesimally small sectors, we get our total volume as we multiply the area by a height function. We do this by integrating beginning at theta equals zero and ending at two pi radians. Now we understand the region as we rotate about theta, we can define the limits of integration of the outer integral. The lower limit starts at theta equals zero and the upper limit is where theta equals two pi radians. Now let's deal with the height component f of xy. We have two functions between which we are calculating volume. We need to subtract one function from the other to determine the height component. To facilitate this, we need to assess which of the two is larger when x and y are zero. So which is the top function and which is the bottom function? If we take the function z equals the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared and substitute zero for x and y, we're left with z equals the square root of 16, so z equals 4 when we take the positive square root. And the second function, being the xy plane, is z equals 0. So in this case, our top function is z equals the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared. And our bottom function is z equals 0. If we now subtract the bottom function from the top function, we're left with the square root of 16 minus x squared minus y squared. To convert the height function to polar coordinates, we substitute r cos theta for x and r sine theta for y, which gives the square root of 16 minus r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. And using the trig identity, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, we're left with our height function, which is the square root of 16 minus r squared in polar coordinates. Now that we have our height component, we can begin to evaluate our integrals. So first, we are integrating from r equals 0 to r equals 4, the square root of 16 minus r squared, r dr. To integrate this, we need to make a substitution. So first, let u equal 16 minus r squared. du by dr is equal to minus 2r minus a half du is equal to r dr. After making the substitution, we now have minus a half multiplied by the integral of u to the power of a half du. Integrating this using the power rule gives us minus a half multiplied by two thirds multiplied by u to the power of three over two. Multiplying through by minus a half and substituting back in for u, we're left with minus one third multiplied by the square root of 16 minus r squared, all cubed, and we need to evaluate this between 0 and 4. So we start by substituting in 4 for r, which gives 0, and then if we substitute 0 in for r, it becomes minus minus 1 third multiplied by the square root of 16 cubed. 
which is equal to 64 divided by 3. Now turning our attention to the outer integral, we need to integrate from theta equals 0 to theta equals 2 pi, 64 divided by 3 d theta, and not forgetting to multiply this result by 2, because as we saw earlier, this will only give us the result for half of the sphere. So using the power rule to integrate this and multiplying through by 2, we get 128 theta divided by 3, and we need to evaluate this between 0 and 2 pi. So plugging in 2 pi radians for theta, we get 256 pi divided by 3, and if we plug in 0 for theta, we get 0. So we have 256 pi by 3 minus 0, which gives us a final answer of 256 divided by 3 multiplied by pi. To verify this, we can use the equation for the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. In our case, r is equal to 4, so this gives 4 thirds pi multiplied by 4 cubed which is equal to 256 divided by 3 multiplied by pi.